So I just pulled these out of the kiln. This came from uh, Mia at Pottery to the People. So I made them and they have a little cork in the back for the salt and the pepper in them. So if you wanna see how I did this, either go on to Pottery to the People with Mia or follow me along and we'll make some. So here I am in the studio, getting ready to make the salt and pepper shakers that I showed you. So just letting you know, I'm starting out just like I do everything else. I, well, not everything, but most everything that I do. Got a slab and I'm gonna put the slab on the table and smooth it out. And then I'll show you what I do um, to make the templates. If you don't, well, if you're not comfortable making your own templates and you have an idea or, or that you want to do a specific uh, type of salt and pepper shaker, Mia at Pottery of the People, I know that she has a template for this. Um, basically, I mean, it's just, it, it's two cylinders and a an oval and a basically a foot. But if you're not comfortable making your own templates, you can get your templates from her or... Uh, two of these that I did, I threw, I threw the cylinder. So you can either hand build these or you can actually throw the cylinder. I'm hand building today. So come on and I'll show you the template that I made. So all I do when I make my templates is I just kind of have an idea of how big I want my salt and pepper shakers to be. Um, the ones that I'm going to make today are the shorter ones. And so I just have a piece of I don't even know what this is. It's just like a piece of plasticky stuff that, that I had laying around. I don't even know where I got it, but I just make a rectangle. Um, you can use craft foam. You can use roofing tar paper. You can, you can use a piece of paper if you wanted to. You don't even need a template at all, but I use this just because it's easier for me. And all you do is you just put this down on the clay and cut it out. I'll show you. Hang on. Here's my template and I just got a, you can either use a needle tool or an X-Acto knife. It really doesn't matter. Um, and then I'm going to put my template down because this is a stiff material. I don't need to use my ruler for a straight edge because I can just put my knife against the edge of this and it cuts out perfectly. So I just cut here. I'm being really careful not to cut my table. Well, okay, truth be told, I'm not being really that careful, but I don't want to have holes all in my table, but sometimes it happens. All right, so there's one, and then I'm just going to put it up right next to the one I just cut. So one is salt, and one is pepper. Again, this clay is so, so soft. But there you go, we got two. Now, the dilemma comes because I don't have enough right now to have the little tray that goes with my salt and pepper shakers, but I will, all of the scraps that I don't use, I'll roll those back up and uh, roll out another slab and use that. And oh. I'm gonna take these out and build my cylinder. All right, so removing the extra clay, and I'm just gonna throw it over here for a moment because I'm gonna use that extra clay to uh, make the bottoms for my cylinders. So this is just like anything else. Be very careful not to warp the clay any more than I need to. I'm gonna release it from the table. I'll turn it to where I can actually see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to use my bevel tool. Again, you don't have to have a tool to do this. You can use your knife. You can butt up the seams right, at, right next to each other if you want to. It's all up to you. But I'm going to put a bevel in it just because it's just because. So I'm going to cut my bevel there. I put my thumb down here at the corner because when I pull my bevel tool down, I don't want to just pull that corner down too. But there's my little bevel on that side. And I got red clay in my white clay. Anyway. All right. So the bevel's that way. And then I'm being very careful to pick this up and put it right back down, just flipping it right on over so that I can do the same thing on this side. And that way I know my bevels match. And I'm gonna do the same to this one on that side right there. Flip it. 
and on this side right here. Just making sure that I've got my thumb down there so I don't do what I just did. <laughs> you don't want to mess that corner up. Okay, so now the next thing to do would be to score and slip. And you're going to get bumped here for a second. Sorry. I got to get into the drawer to get my trusty scoring tool. So I'm going to score this edge and I'm going to score this edge. Get my clay out of there. I'm going to flip it again and flip it again and score this edge and score this edge. Again, because my clay is really, really wet, I don't need to use slip. So I'm just going to use my, not that, I'm just going to use my trusty slip brush here and I'm just putting water on it. I'm going to work at it one at a time. So I'm putting water on that and water on this side. And then I'm going to just join them together. Which side do I like better? I think I want that on the inside. So I'm just making it into a circle. Now you can do this on a form if you wanted to. I don't have a form that's this size that I like. So I'm not doing it on a form. But you just make it into a cylinder. Make your edges match up. Push them together so that they seal. Make sure that that slip comes out so that you can see it. That way you ensure that you're making a pretty good seal. If you can see the slip, you're making a pretty good seal. And then I'm going to use my... Ew. If you got clay all over your hands, you really want to get that off of there because all you're going to be doing is making a bigger mess. Also, keep your tools clean. And I'm just I'm just cleaning up the seam on the inside here. I think you can see that. Yep. Right here, I'm making sure that that seam is together. I'm evening out the top, it really doesn't matter that much for the top and the bottom because you're going to put, you know, a top on the top and the bottom. Just turned it over, making sure that I'm closing up that seam as well. And then I'm going to take my trusty red rib. I'm going to put my hand down on the inside. You can't see what I'm doing. Um, let's see if I can... If I can do, I don't know if I can do this this way, but I'm going to try. I'm putting my hand on the inside, and then I'm just using my rib to make sure that that seam is closed up really well. And just a hint, if you've got clay all over your, um, all over your rib when you're trying to do this, all you're going to do is keep putting divots in your in your clay and you don't want to do that so make sure your rib is clean and you just close up that seam flip it do the same thing here at the top just make sure that the seam is closed all right we got one cylinder right there for a salt and pepper shaker. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Just getting a little bit of water, putting it on the edge to make some slip, flipping that over, putting it on the edge to make some slip. Make sure my hands are somewhat cleaned off. And then I don't like, cause I've got, there's like stuff on here. I think it's red clay again, or dirt. I don't know. So I want that to be my inside because it's ugly. And then I'm just going to curve this around, put my seams together, just like that. Push down gently so that they're somewhat stuck together. And then when I've got a little bit more um, together here, I'm just going to push these edges 
closed, <clears throat> excuse me, closed and make that slip come out so that I can see that slip. I want, I want to see slip because once you see slip start squishing out, that means that your seams are pretty much um, together. Again, using the red rib. The last one I did the inside first. This one I'll do the outside first just to see you can see what I'm doing. I don't, I think you can see this. I'm just taking my red rib and making that seam disappear. Flip it. And do the same thing. Make that seam disappear. Still have to do the inside seam. So I'm turning that around so that I can see it. I'm cleaning off my tool. And then with pressure on the outside so that I'm not going to make the whole thing mess up. I'm going over the seam on the inside just to seal that together. So it's just like, you know, any other hand-built mug or whatever cylinder, or, you know, anything that you're making where you're joining two pieces together or one piece together in a from a slab. It's the same procedure. You just go through and make sure you got everything closed up and that your seal is I mean that your seam is sealed. All right, so now we have our two containers or two little cylinders. Now, these two little cylinders need bottoms. So, remember I said, ooh, scoops. Remember I said we were gonna use the extra clay? Now is when we do that. Again, there's lots of different ways that you can do this. Um, one of the easiest ways to do this is to have a handy dandy set of cookie cutters that you can figure out what size you need. I think that is about what we need. That is a, I don't know. That is a three inch cookie cutter right here. It comes in a set. I'll put the description in, I mean, I'll put the whatever this is, I'll put it in the description. I'm sure it came off of Amazon. Everything comes off of Amazon, even though I hate Amazon, but whatever. I get everything from Amazon or Davids. All right, there's one, two. Three. And I have another piece over here. Trust me. Oh, that's close. All right. Sometimes you can kind of fudge it a little bit. If you don't have quite enough, you can take another piece of, of clay. I just took a... Hold on. See if I can show you what I'm talking about. I just, I didn't have quite enough on the side. So I just took another piece of clay off the end and I'm just kind of squishing it on there. Again, this clay is so, so wet that I can do this with no problem. If your clay is too dry, this little solution will not work. But it's wet, so I can do this. And there we go. And now I have four. Well, two tops and two bottoms. And now I'm going to take these. That's for one of them. And this is for one of them. Take my handy dandy scoring tool. Get you back up. Well, I guess that's okay. You see what I'm doing? so um so i'm just gonna score around the outside of this oh one thing that i was gonna do before i put this on i have no sorry i have a stamp it's a just a 3d printed um stamp that a friend of mine did at the Floyd County College and Career Academy, which if you don't know what a college and career academy is, I strongly suggest you check that out because it is amazing. I have my cornstarch in a bag and I'm going to 
put that down here on that and then very carefully put my stamp here there you go warehouse creations pottery and home decor right there Ta -da! so i'm going to do that on the bottom of that one and i'll do it on the bottom of this one same thing cornstarch make sure that you use cornstarch or something as a release agent because if you don't your life will not be pleasant for a little while all right back to this <clears throat> so there is my scored and slipped piece i'm gonna put some water on this one oops might help if i score this score 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 here we go scoring it really well because i certainly don't want the bottom to fall off of this or the top put some water <clears throat> and then put the bottom on and push and again you see where that slip is oozing out we want that that means that there's a good connection there and we definitely want that good connection you can put this on a banding wheel if you wanted to um, I'm not doing that right now because my banding wheels across the room and I don't want to get up <laughs> how's that for the ultimate in lazy so then <clears throat> I'm just taking <clears throat> oh my gosh y'all Okay, I've just brought you outside so that I can show you something. If you're not familiar with springtime in the south, there's pollen everywhere. It's in the corners of the, the deck. It's all over the roads. It's all over my car. And one of the biggest culprits is this right here. It's beautiful, but all of the flowers from that Oh, sorry about Freddie. I'm going to turn you around this way. The flowers from that. And my biggest thing, all of the obnoxious pollen little wormy things are coming off of that and just making me crazy. But everything is starting to bloom, which is great. You see it? It's starting to bloom right there but it sure does mess with my voice and everything else, but it's pretty and it will be pretty, but oof. Well, I was up anyway, so I just grabbed my banding wheel. So it's just easier to use. All right, back to what we were doing. So now all I'm doing is taking the seam and using this tool and just pulling down a little bit of the top to mix in to match the, the cylinder so that I've got a good seal all the way around. And once I've done that, clean off the goo that you get from your tool. And trusty red rib, here we go. I'm just going along that seam to make sure that I cannot see a line. I don't want to see a line on that seal. because I don't want to see where it joined. So I'm just going around and making sure that it is gone. And once that happens, I take my sponge. Now you can really, you know, I really should be using a finishing sponge here. One of the white ones from Mud Tools. But again, I'm being lazy and I don't want to get up. So I'm just using one of these. Do as I say, not as I do. That's what I tell my son a lot. But there we go. Ta-da. And we have a cylinder with a bottom. Now we need a cylinder with a top. So I'm going to do the same kind of thing. I'm going to score the top of this. I'm gonna score the top of this and I'm making sure that I am not picking up this one because this is the bottom of the other cylinder. I don't wanna use this. So if you've got all of your bottoms and tops in a line, just make sure you pick up the right one. 
it's this one. So I'm just gonna score and slip or yeah, score and slip along the edge. Doesn't have to be pretty. And then put some water on here. And some water on here. I remember I said if your clay is not this soft and you probably need to use real slip but mine is really really soft so I don't need to do that and then I'm just gonna hold on, I think I can bring it up just a little bit so you can see it better I'm just gonna take this and put it on top of here squish it all together make sure that I see that slip coming out And then I've got a good seal. And then it is all together. And then I'm going to do the same thing as I did with the other one. And blend that seam in. All the way around. Wipe off my tool, get my get my trusty rib, and go and smooth that out. Now what you have, <clears throat> once you've done that, you have a closed form. So there is air in there. I can push around a little bit on this, and it's not gonna it's not gonna cause a whole lot of issues. I mean, I'm not saying you should go in and squish the whole thing together, but you can clean up any of the seam that you need to. Um, you can work with it a little bit more than you could before because it is a closed seam, a closed form and has some air trapped in there. All right, using my sponge to just kind of tidy up a little bit around here. And we have a salt or a pepper shaker. All right, I'm gonna do the other one and then I will come right back to you. I'm back. So I've got my two, um, my salt and my pepper shaker. And now what I'm gonna do is show you how I make the tray. And this, I don't have a template for this because it changes uh, depending on what size my salt and pepper shakers are. So I've got those and I told you that I was gonna use all the scraps and make another slab, which I did. So I'm going to have it right here on the table, just trying to make sure that I've gotten all the air bubbles out, which I do not. There's one right there. Boop. Ooh, good one. All right, fix that. Make sure that I've got it smoothed out. Okay, so I don't know what size to make this thing. So what I'm going to do, it, how can you see this? That way, okay. What I can do is I'm going to take my salt and my pepper shakers and I'm going to put them together right here. Now, I don't want this tray to be a whole lot bigger than they are just because I want it to be a little cozy kind of thing. So I'm going to take my tool and just kind of draw um, a little bit of a, a guide to how big I want that. All right, so my trick is that I have, remember I showed you this? This, the case that it comes in is great for this because it's round and I need something round. So I'm going to make sure that there's no other clay on it. And then, do you see what I just did? I got all this clay dust and sand and stuff on my clay. I don't think that's gonna matter, but I guess we'll see. Anyway, so I want this to be round on the edges. So I am just kind of making a round place right there. And making a round place right there. Put all my cookie cutters back in the thingy thingy. 
Then I'm just gonna eyeball this because here's my line where I wanted it to go. So I'm gonna take it and just kind of go around here and make it match that curve that I just cut and do the same thing over here and kind of pull it out a little bit and come around this way. And there we have a tray. I'm gonna make sure that this crack gets taken care of. <sighs> don't do that. Don't don't blow. Don't blow clay. That's not good. Um, yeah. Again, do as I say, not as I do. I'm just smoothing out the edges right here. Now notice that this is not a perfect oval. It is not a perfect shape at all. If you want to cut out something perfect for yours, please, please, please feel free to do whatever you want to do. But I like my pottery to be, you know, my favorite word is wonky. I like it wonky. All right, so now I need, I don't have enough clay right here. I want to have a little edge around there. So I'm going to go one more time, roll out a slab. No, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm going to roll a coil right here. And you get to see how bad I am at rolling a coil. So I know the best thing to do is it, only push in one direction. Don't, um, don't try to, to do like you did when a little kid with Play-Doh. Don't pull and push at the same time. You push and then pull back and then push and pull back. And if you're still having trouble, you can put like a little twist in it and that works somewhat. Now I am getting closer to what I want. I know it looks like I'm pushing and pulling, but I'm not. I'm pushing and then pulling it back with no, um, no pressure. So I'm pushing with pressure, pulling back with no pressure. Pushing with pressure, pulling back with no pressure. And then twisting it a little bit, doing the same thing. Now, I, the ideal is to have this to where it's going to go around the whole thing. Not quite yet. A little more. Getting closer. Isn't this riveting watching me do this coil when I'm not even in the hole shot? <laughs> oh, did it again. Don't do that. Um, I'm getting a little bit of cracking down here. Just a little bit. It's not bad. So I'm just going to fix that. All right. So now I'm going to take my pony roller. And then I'm just going to flatten this out a little bit. And when I flatten it out, I'm going to have what I want for my wall. And again, this is not supposed to be perfect. I do not want it to be perfect. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to score along the end of this. And again, y'all, if you want to do something perfect, I told you Pottery of the People Me has got a great um, template that you can use to do this. And it would be perfect. But mine, this one is not going to be perfect. Sometimes they are. I mean, no, my stuff is never perfect. But I mean, you know, sometimes they're a little bit more true and overly. If that's a word, think of words. True, overly. Um, but I'm just going around. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you can see it, but I got purple hair. I'm excited about that. It's up in a braid right now just because it was, well, I don't know, just because they put it in a braid. But I got some purple hair. I don't have all purple hair because I can't do that. I, I'm just, I'm not that confident in myself. But anyway, 
a little too much information, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I feel like I'm talking to y'all. It's just, it's kind of weird when you're talking to a camera, but now I'm, I feel like I'm talking to you. So talk back, give me a comment or something. Talk back to me because I get lonely. <laughs> All right. The next thing I'm going to put the slip on the edge of this piece, not slip water. More, 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 more. And then I'm just going to stick it on here. I'm going a little bit in because I'm going to, when I blend this, I'm going to pull up the edge so that I can make sure that it's going to adhere pretty well. And then I'm going to cut it there so that I can attach and blend here. So I'm blending just like if you're putting a foot on something. This is exactly like putting a foot on except that instead of putting it in the middle, you're just putting it on the edge. And I'm going back around and making sure that it's stuck down to my base. And again, if you see that slip squishing out, you know that you've got a good, uh, a good seal there. Now, right now, this is ugly because I don't have, I don't have anything blended up. I don't have it all um, stuck together yet. So I'm gonna take this is a. This brush is really, it's a really fine brush. It's real soft, really soft. I don't want a really soft brush for this right now. So this one's a little bit harder. I mean, it's not a hard brush, but it's a, it's a little more substantial. And then I'm gonna go around and just smooth that seam on the inside, get rid of some of those score marks that I had because they will show. And I don't know what's going on right there. It's just in my, oh, that's my sand. All right, I'll fix that. I'll just make it a little bit more pretty. On the outside, remember I told you that I was going to leave that lip? I am, but right now I'm going to come back with my model, my, what is this, modeling tool? And I'm going to pull that base up into the side all the way around. Now with my, I'm, I'm assuming this is going to be stuck a little bit, yeah. But I'm going to put it back up here on my banding wheel so I can see a little bit better. Just going up and incorporating, ooh, wait, that's, wait, that's cracking a little bit. Just by looking at this, I may have tried to use this clay too many times in one sitting. So there's a really good possibility that this is gonna crack. But because I'm doing a video and I'm trying to trying to do it kind of quickly, I'm not gonna stop and do something different. So we'll, we'll, we're on this journey together. If it cracks, we'll all know why. So I'm just pulling that up. So that I have a good seam. And I smell ramen noodles cooking downstairs, which is completely and totally disgusting. But I'm up here and I'm not cooking, so there you go. Mm. Then I'm taking my sponge and I'm going around and making that a little prettier than it was. Because it is certainly not pretty right now. This is how... When I do my pottery, this is how I put my own personal touch to it. It's not a cookie cutter template for me. Um, not that there's anything wrong with templates. I think they're great. I, I use them. But for something like this, I don't want it to be the exact same as every other base that I make. Because every time I make a... Um, Every time I make these cylinders, you know, because they are hand-built, they're all just a little bit different. So, there's that. 
All right, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, not this one, I'm going to take um, this will work. This point is really too pointy for what I want to do in here, but this one, I'm going to wet it and I'm just going to go in and make sure that that seam is blended all the way all the way in, all the way around. I'm just, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. I'm just taking that point and going around and making sure that it's sealed. Any extra clay, it just goes down into the seam and it works really well to help that seam close up. There's not a whole lot else that I'm going to be able to do with this tonight because it is so wet. So we will have to adjourn. Get that sand out of there. I will cover this tonight. And oh, we've got an art market tomorrow. <laughs> uh, tomorrow night I should be able to get to this. So I'm going to leave it here. I don't like how that looks, so I'm going to take a chance right now and just kind of trim this off a little bit because I didn't like it. Hey, if you don't like something with your pottery, don't be afraid to mess with it because, you know, it's just clay. If you mess it up, just make another one. Everything that you learn from the first one that you made, even if it's screwed up, you learn what not to do or what to do. So don't be afraid of it. I know when I first started out, I was worried about clay because I was like, you know, we have to pay for that and it's expensive and da 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 da. But if you don't, if you don't experiment, you don't ever learn. So feel free, experiment, live your life, live a little, um, you know, do some experimentation, have fun with it. This is pottery. It's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be stressful and it's not supposed to be frustrating. Although it is both of those things from time to time. But I can't do anything else right now because the, the clay is just way too wet. So I'm gonna cover this up. Um, we're going to our uh, second market of the semester, of the semester. <laughs> yep, retired educator. Second market of the season. And hopefully we won't be in all the, too much pollen and I won't sneeze. I will make sure that I am medicated. And uh, we're excited about it. We get to see some good friends tomorrow. And there you go. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Or not bye. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. One thing I wanted to point out before I go is that while this is drying, I want to make sure that I put something in it. Uh, because if, if I just left it like it was, it would warp. So this is just a, a sock with some sand in it. I would not recommend sand, actually, because it comes through the sock. I would recommend what I have down there, which is kitty litter. I just haven't done anything with it yet to change out the socks. But just put something in your pot so that it doesn't warp and cover them and uh, so that it can dry a little bit slowly and everything can kind of be at the same speed of drying that's really important because that can help ward off a lot of issues so there we go there's my scoopy scoops i have over here a whole new project that we're going to be talking about i'm so excited to use this this is going to be for travel mugs it's from alexandria pottery this is coming up so i'm, I'm excited about that but for now, I will see you tomorrow when this has set up for a little bit. Bye. Okay, they're dry enough. I can touch them. And you can see I just need to uh, to do some cleaning up right here on the edges just because they're really rough. So what I'm doing with that, I'm going to, uh, because of this stupid thumb, I have to be careful about what I'm doing right now. Um, so I'm just going to use my rib and just go around and kind of clean that up just a little bit, make it prettier and just kind of 
this one is actually a little bit bigger than the other one that I've made, but I don't, I, I don't, I never go into it knowing exactly what size I want them to do. I do have the template, like I said, for the, for the actual shakers. But even that, if you wanted to do a different shape for your shakers, you could. <laughs> Doing this without a thumb is a little bit, <laughs> is a little difficult. But just taking my sponge and smoothing it out. You know, this is the normal normal thing you do with hand building stuff. You just kind of smooth it until it looks like you want it to. This one's going to be a little bit more rustic for me because of the, the thumb. Um, I'm lucky. I just, I didn't have to have stitches or anything because it's obviously, I mean, it's not a deep cut, you know, but it's so sharp when you, when you do that, it's one of those things that it's so sharp you don't actually feel it cutting, but you know what happens and you have that split second of going, <gasps> Oh, this is gonna hurt right before it just and it bled like a stuck pig. It was awful. And I was at a show too, so it was really kind of uh, frustrated with myself because I know better. I'm using the sure, sure form here because I've got this real weird build up thing and I don't like how it looks. So I'm just gonna kind of make this a better shape because I just didn't like what it was doing right there. And if you don't like what something's doing, you can fix it. So take that. Use my sponge. Smooth it down. Now if you wanted to, you could actually leave that texture in it if you want. Some people like it. You know, I don't know. It's up to you. Again, it's pottery, it's yours. Make it what you want. Bill does not have to go to school tomorrow, so he is a happy camper. That's why he turned on the kiln. As he can. We are, I don't know why I'm telling you this, I guess just because I feel like I'm just talking while I'm doing this. We're trying to decide whether we want to take a trip to Scotland as a vacation, and I really, really want to go, but I, I don't, I don't know when or how or even how to begin thinking about doing something that big because we've never been anywhere like that but I'd love to take my son oh, who am I kidding I'd love to take me um because we do have <laughs> my mom is all into like the the ancestry stuff and she's traced our family back I mean we had family in Scotland and there's actually a castle that's in Scotland that is it's still in use and it's our family's castle. So I thought that would be so cool to go and check on that and just see it and just walk where my ancestors walked. I just, you know, that's really cool to me. So I don't know, got that on my mind. Thinking about going back to work again next year to get some extra money to have things like, you know, a Scotland vacation or um, a new car I don't really want to go back to work because I like being able to do this for you guys and, and make this a try and make this the the full time business. But I'm not sure that it would be financially responsible of me not to go back. So a lot of stuff on my mind. I don't know. A little too much information, I guess, sharing. But I, I tend to do that. <laughs> Sorry. But we'll see. I don't know if anybody out there is from Scotland. Let me know what to what I need to make sure that I look look for and see. I don't want to do like a, a commercial tour because that's not that's not my that's not my style. I'm a more fly by the seat of my pants. I know you can't imagine that based on you know how I do my pottery, but whatever. All right, so I've trimmed this down and just made it look a lot prettier than it was. I'm gonna go ahead and sign it now because I forgot to put my stamp in the bottom. Go figure, ADHD pottery. 
that's me. So I'm just going to sign it. Put my little bean in there. I don't know if I ever told you guys, but I use the bean. I don't know if you can see that or not. The, the bean uh, is from Silly Bean, because that's what my husband calls me. That was just the nickname that he had for me. Um, just the whole time we were dating, and I don't know, it just kind of stuck. So that's my that's my, my nickname. White clay, I have a bucket that I put all my reclaim in, and then I'll go deal with that later on. We have a container here. This is either salt or pepper. I don't know. I don't know which one it's gonna be, but I'm gonna do that final finishing while I've got it on here. Finish this out. I just there's something about hand building pottery that I just really really love I mean there's there's the wheel throwing stuff that's also fun but to me the joy and the satisfaction that I get from hand building a piece is just I don't know it's special to me I, I just I love it um, it's like the whole world can go away and I can concentrate on what I'm building and it's just soothing for me. Oh, I forgot, I did do my stamp on the bottom. See, with Warehouse Creations, you've got the Florida Lee for Bill since he's from Louisiana and then there's my Silly Bean for me because that's what he called me. All right, that's pretty good right there. Do the other one real quick. There's not a, as much to do on this one because I seem to have done a better job of working on finishing it before I put it up to dry. I probably got distracted or something. I'm telling you, man. I do go back to the doctor tomorrow, so I don't know if I'm gonna ask her about ADHD medicine for me. I don't like taking medicine, but I also know that I'm like really scattered right now. So I don't know. I don't know. Those of you with ADHD, you understand, if you don't have a schedule and a, a ritual, not a ritual, but like, you know, a set schedule, uh, it, it messes with me a little bit. All right, now, how do I want to put salt and pepper the words? Okay, thought about it, and I think I'm gonna do just a big S and a big P on this one. I'm gonna put the, the seam, I can still see where the seam was sort of, I'm gonna put it in the back and I'm going to make a big old S right here. Now you can freehand this, you can do um, any kind of stencil that you wanna do. I'm just I'm just gonna freehand it right now. So I'm gonna do a big old S. Just like that. And then, I'm going to take out my trusty diamond cold tool set right here. Get the little one. There's probably a better way to do this, but I, I kind of know how to how I need to do this. So I'm gonna work on that. So here we go. I'm gonna go down. I'm gonna have my little S come this way, and it's gonna come around here. So y'all make me nervous. Clean it up a little here. Then I'm going to get my paintbrush that is not, it's not, it's not stiff, but it's not a floppy paintbrush. So then I'm just gonna kind of clean this up a little bit. And then I'll go through anything I don't like. I can 
here's my tools. Oh wait, I know what I want. Not that one. This is just a silicone. It's just a silicone um, tip. I don't know what you call it, brush? It's not really a brush because it's tip, but I like using this because I can go in to something that I've carved and make it just a much, much cleaner line. It looks like that. I'm not gonna like stress over this because when I do um, glaze it, it'll, it'll change that. But there's the S. Now, when I do the P, I'm looking to find the same, there's the same. When I do the P, I wanna make sure that I start at the top and the bottom of the S so that my um, my letters are the same height. So I'm just gonna do a P. I want it to be about the same size too. So I'm looking about there to go there. And then just take that P down to about right there. Maybe a little bit rounder. That way, let's move some of that back down. All right, there's my rough P. Then I will take my diamond core tool here, get the clay out of it, and go straight down with my P. I'm so not good at this yet. This takes a lot of practice and I just have not spent the time, cut good finger, haven't spent the time to practice with it. So I just kind of learn when I go. That's what I do. Boop. Take out the P. There's my P. Use my sponge and knock it down a little bit. Use my tool here to make the lines a lot better. Make them neater. we go. There's a yuck. Well, so much for having a clean band-aid. <laughs> oh well. There's the pea. So we've got salt and pepper. And for the salt, can you guys see that? salt I'm gonna do two holes for the pepper I'm gonna do three so I'm gonna do one about right there one about right there and for the pepper I'll do three one one and one and to do that I have these little brass uh, round hole cutters I have no idea what size this is but it's I don't know if you can if you can see that it's I don't I don't know what size that is but it, it's little but it's not too small because I want to be able to get you know salt and pepper out of it so down and around pull that out oh pollen Ugh. down and around oop that one got stuck in there it'll come out This one down and around, down and around, down and around. You can use a drill bit for this. You can use whoa, throwing stuff. You can use whatever you want to use. That's fine. All right. So I've got my holes in the top and the bottom. Now, how do you get the salt and the pepper in there? Now, there's a couple, I mean, there's so many different ways you could do this. I could have done this and gotten one of those, you know, the stoppers that you can get from Amazon and, and trying to figure out what size the hole should be and all of that. You could, you could make the little magic salt and pepper shakers that I don't understand. <laughs> or you can do what I'm doing 
and just make it to where you can have a cork in the back. If you have a cork in the back, then you can load it that way. I have a bag of corks. Now, I also have a friend who owns a, a vineyard and winery, so I can also get corks from them. Newbies, woohoo! Big plug right there. But this is just leftover corks that I had from a friend of mine. Um, just corks. So, how big do you put them in there? Well, you know that your clay is gonna shrink, so you gotta make sure that when you put your hole in there, I'm gonna put these down a little bit, <coughs> not too low because I want them, if they're up here in the, the tray, I don't want the cork to be coming too far down. I just licked my finger, that's disgusting. Um, but I do want them kind of on the bottom half. I don't want them in the middle, I don't want them in the top. I want them about, about right here. So I look at the, at the P and I want it to go right behind the P so maybe about right there and when i do that just like anything else that you're going to cut i'm going to put a little mark around there so that i can see that's about how big the hole needs to be and a little bit because remember this is going to shrink so i'll do the same thing with this one and i do want to kind of line them up so, and they go right there, and I want that to be about right there. Just making that line. Look, check to make sure they're a little even. This one is a little higher than this one, so when I when I make the hole. In this one, I'll raise it up just a little bit, but I still have the idea of how big I want it. I have a hole, I think this is a half inch. Of course, if my ruler, if the, the numbers on my ruler were visible, that would help. Um, This looks a little bit bigger than a half inch-ish, but it's, it's close. So, I'm going to take this and I'm going to drill out my hole. And then, ah, it's getting stuck. Nope, nope, nope. Hi, honey. Oh, he brought me an adult beverage. I have a good husband. A very small bit of an adult beverage. Pardon me. Oh, that's good. All right. So, because this is still a little bit small, I'm going to gently, and in the best circle I can possibly make, I am cutting it out a little bit bigger. I'll take my sponge and kind of make that. Forget the sponge. Use your finger. Finger's your friend. Make it like that. Now everything that's fallen down on the inside of these, don't worry about it because once it's leather hard or even bone dry, you can shake that around and it'll come out. If I had really worried about it, I could have cut this in half, taken half out and then cutting the other half out, but I'm not really that worried about it. Checking my cork. Okay, so it just fits. Now remember this is gonna shrink. So if I want the cork to fit this, I'm gonna have to make it just a little bit bigger than that just a little bit so I'm just gonna go in and shave I'm not cutting cutting I'm just kind of shaving down the side that I just cut out just a little bit finger line that up a little bit there we go so does that cork fit now? It's a little loose, and that's what I want it to be because it will shrink. All right, let's do the other one. But remember I said I was gonna put this down a little bit. I'm putting them side by side, and then I'm gonna put the top of this one about right there. Take it, make a circle. Punch it out. If it comes out one whole piece, that's great. If it doesn't, I'll get it later. 
and I did. And I get a laser. It's gotta be a little bit bigger. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. But I'm gonna keep the top about the same because that's where the height on the other one, on the pepper shaker is. Checking to make sure they're about the same place. Check the port, it is loose. Perfect, use that finger, straighten it up, clean it up a little bit, make it less ugly. Okay. About perfect. Put your corks to the side. You have your salt, you have your pepper. Lucy sees another dog. She, I don't know what she thinks she would do to the dog. She'd just lick them and, and love on them. But salt, pepper, ready to go in a bisque. We'll come back eventually. These things take forever. But it's all right. I love doing videos. I know you're sideways. I love doing these videos for you guys. I hope that you're enjoying learning um, what I'm doing. Again, I'm not perfect. I'm not the one that comes up with this kind of stuff. I'm just showing you what I do. Thanks to, to Mia at Potty of the People. And I think um, Marie at, I think it's Potter Crafters. I think she did something like this. It's a little bit different, but I mean, everybody does something a little bit different, but salt and pepper shakers. It's kind of hard to come up with a original design if you're gonna do just basics. Hi, Bill. All right, we'll see you guys when these are bisques and uh, glazed and we'll see you later. Okay, look, I got them out of the kiln. They survived the bisque fire. Um, they're here, everything looks great. And the next step is to glaze them. See ya. Hey guys, so the light is pretty horrible in here right now. I know, I'm sorry. Um, we've got a show tomorrow. So this kiln unloading was not, you know, we couldn't really film it like we had normally done with our kiln unloadings. That is the bottom of the salt and pepper shakers. Looks good. That is Snapdragon. That's just a Celadon on, I think this was white clay, yeah. So this is a Snapdragon Celadon. And, oh, well, poo. They came out okay, except that the, where the salt, where the S and the P are, um, I'm not sure what happened because I knew I, I had pretty decent coverage of the underglaze in there, but I must have, I don't know what I did. I think I can fix that. So I'll just refire and put, you know, put more underglaze in that. But I don't, I don't know what happened with that, but there's the, the back. So the holes worked. It's got egg plants, no, eggshell on the inside, but there you go. Salt and pepper. I'll put it on this side where the light is. I don't know. There's no, horrible light. Sorry. Um, but there you go. There's that. Uh, not exactly how I wanted it to turn out, but at least they didn't explode. So there's that. <laughs>